Oh, you got a lint. Oh, no. Is I'm picking on you. Just don't pick my lint. We're on! Woohoo! Okay, I dare everybody. We just played happy, by the way. Because so I'm I happy. dare you to try to figure out what our theme is for the month of March. <laughs> yep. And I think I think it's be happy. Choose happy. Right? Choose happy. Choose happy. Choose happy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, and I have to update this book um, because it says all swans in England are property. Well, it says of the queen. So is it of the king now? <laughs> Must or is be it? property of the I crown. I guess it would have to be capital of the crown. Property of the crown. Easy for you to say. Oh, my goodness. Oh, missing something? Where's my stuff? There it is. Hey, we have... Did I bury um, your stuff? Before we go any further, we have um, free tickets for uh, children at the uh, Jordan, 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 gosh, Jordan World Circus. The circus coming to town. Yay. So, tickets. There's, there's a bunch of them on the back. If you need any of these, great. There's flyers on the back. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, March 28th and 29th at 6.30 in the evening at Benton County Fairgrounds. Mm. So, Ooh. might be kind of fun. $10 per adult, though. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Yeah, well, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. okay. But, uh, I don't <laughs> <laughs> nothing's working very well, obviously. I, I'll get it, hon. I don't. I didn't even get paid. Wow, I am surprised. <laughs> wow. I was kind of waiting for it. <laughs> I was too, to be honest. T-shirts and sweatshirts that you might want to have or maybe not. Um, the body is an ancient, crumbling, cursed, and haunted. My body. So sorry. My body My is body. a temple. Ancient, crumbling, cursed, and haunted. <laughs> yes. That's what I didn't say. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and a picture of uh, Buddha, uh, inquire within. <laughs> and of course, holy chit. C H I T. H O. H O L E E. Holy chit. All right. The Earth's rotation makes my day. <laughs> and a caffeine based life form. <laughs> there may be some truth to that. There may be some truth to that. Uh, Newton's first law of motion: a body at rest stays at rest. So stop bothering me. <laughs> Sleeping in today. Yep. Yep. Nap time. Oops. Are you avalanching over there, I, Phil? I'm not yet, but I'm trying. I am. You trying. should see the side table next to our, next to his chairs. Stacked with That's not, magazines. There's nothing stuff. on there. You, yeah, because you clear, had to clean it off because your hand was. That's where I put my arm now when I elevate it, so there's nothing on the table. <laughs> but usually it's a stack true. this deep. Quite true. And he's so funny, he can go, Well, I need this piece of paper. And he'll go and go, Tink! Everything else stays the same, and he's got the piece of paper. It's the weirdest darn thing. Yeah, I, I just he organize files and vertically. file vertically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, George uh, said, um, capitalism tries for a delicate balance. It attempts to work things out so that everyone gets just enough stuff to keep them from getting violent and trying to take other people's stuff. <laughs> and remember, you know, George said this like, like probably 40 years ago. I mean, his stuff's getting Some old, kind of like the rest of us. So, Come hey, on. Joe, how's Sue? Welcome home. Welcome home. Yeah. Uh, and, jo and John said, I believe that as soon as people want peace in the world, they can have it. Trouble is, they're not aware they can get it. Probably true. Tell people who George and John are. I know. George and John, for anybody younger, is, um, well, John was one of the, one of the Beatles. Was one, I think he was, he was the first one to die. So Rock group, the Beatles. Yep. yep. Look them up. But Help, what, I need somebody. Yep. What was, what was amazing, though, is I remember so distinctly bought a house in like 1975 so i was probably 24 23 something like that next door neighbor had a 16 year old girl and said something about the beatles and she had no idea who i was talking about even at that time wow. so i was like wow okay times change go ahead and do that speaking of help okay 
Hope Speaking I need of somebody. help, yeah, we need um, everybody, including everybody online. Jan was going to be nice about this whole thing and not make anybody feel guilty. And I'm not going to make anybody feel guilty. Just we drastically need volunteers and help for the expo. Um, we have nowhere near enough people to help. So sign up. Sign up now. And you know, it's like, well, it's a month away. And you know, I get it. But at the same time, but I can't those... live with her thinking that we have nobody to help. <laughs> so the the um, the ones that are organizing all of this, oh my gosh, to us a month is nothing. It's like, oh my gosh. So even though it seems like forever to you, I'll get plenty of time. Please don't wait. Please have mercy on those of us who are trying to put it all together, and please. Long sign time. up sign up now and we what we we really need uh, readers for sure yeah we need we and like, ticket takers on sunday ticket takers, ticket takers on sunday we and we'll readers. have another readers practice only three people showed up for the readers practice yesterday so it was just bad timing or something but anyway um so there's more stuff going on plenty of stuff for you to volunteer for we really could use the help yes we could because it's just crazy it takes a village it to does put on an it really does and it's a Yay! Thank you. Here, I'll post a link so you guys that are online, even though you're watching from your jammies, it's way okay to do that. Um, but we still can. Yeah, we, you can come to the show in the jammies. We don't care, really. Okay. Oh, please no. <laughs> <laughs> Most people do anyway. You know, whatever, whatever. But sign up, sign up soon. Sign up now. Okay. If Cheryl already has her name on stuff, we don't have to sign up. You don't need to. Yeah. It should be already there. If you're already signed up, your name will be on there. But sign up often. You can do more than a day. <laughs> and if you sign up, you get in free. So what the heck? A fashion is nothing but an induced epidemic. <laughs> <laughs> nothing is impossible for the man who doesn't have to do it himself. <laughs> See, that's how I'm learning that. Habits awesome. form a second nature. And True. they do indeed. They do indeed. When people are free to do as they please, they usually imitate each other. Uh, don't buy the house, buy the neighborhood. Mm. Yeah. So. True. Yeah. Yeah. Did we have a good week? Yeah. Everybody noticed there was uh, something quite uh, large that is no longer across the street? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 I mean, we knew that. We knew it was coming. But for those of the people online, uh, we did have a, um, a um, challenged residence across the street. It was a Old, hotel. old motel. motel. It was an old motel. It was it was dilapidated 20 years ago when we moved in here. So, but um, it's gone. Yeah. It is gone. Totally different view out front. They're temporarily. I think they're going to be doing a, a park, uh, and then ultimately, I think the about maybe five years or so, they're going to build a fire station. So, uh, those who bring sunshine to the lives of others cannot keep it from themselves. Perfect for today's message. Ah, but a man's reach should exceed his grasp. And I did do that one last week, so I will continue with the next two. Uh, to see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. Beautiful. So can I speak to that? Sure. Thank you. So when we get engrossed in something and time kind of stands still, we've tapped into eternity. So it's really important to do those things that really connect us in and help us tune in to that otherworldliness. You ever done gardening or some project or some hobby that you really like and you swear you've been there for half an hour and it's like... Two hours later. No, like... I'm hungry. What time is it? Crap! How'd that happen? Yeah. <laughs> hours have passed. Yeah, hours you're, have you're passed. You're tapping into eternity when you do that. Yep. Nothing is more, high, more highly to be prized than the value of a day. True. That's right. That's right. Today's the day. Okay. I know I got some stuff from Sue. Where is it? There it is. So this is Sue's fault. <laughs> we know but this is the last of it. We've been doing them here. So. Um, I tried to catch the fog yesterday. Missed. <laughs> <laughs> what are the strongest days of the week? 
Saturdays and Sundays. The rest are weekdays. <laughs> yeah, and there are some on here that I absolutely can't say. <laughs> Hunt him down later, he'll let you yeah. get them. I'm surprised nobody yelled out, no, do it anyway! Yeah. No, you know what? <laughs> We'd have too many people go, ooh, oh, that's <laughs> awful. Like, you, there was a joke in uh, the comics for, um, Kids, uh, it was Baldo, Baldo. If, you, if you watch, if you look at Baldo at all. And they're looking through, it says, oh, Dad's got these old magazines in the garage. And he's pulling them out, and they're going, ooh, uh, what, what is this? This mad magazine on the oh, whole no. thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, but wasn't, you know, if you've never seen anything like that, and it's a totally different generation, you probably would go, what is this? And then all of a sudden, they, they were going, it's kind of this funny. is kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> in a weird kind of way. In a weird kind of way. Yeah. I always like the thing at the end where Alfred you fold, it, you can fold the thing yeah. and go, how did they do that? If you've never found a mad, uh, mad magazine, to find one. They're um, historical yes. as opposed to hysterical. So. Uh, eight new choir robes are currently needed. Due, this is a church bulletin. Eight new choir robes are needed due to the addition of several new members and to the deterioration of some older ones. <laughs> Scouts are saving aluminum cans, bottles, and other items to be recycled. Proceeds will be used to cripple children. <laughs> Just put that one aside. <laughs> and to show that my sense of humor is truly odd, I have a couple here that actually I kind of liked. They were good. Um, what does Godzilla, Godzilla eat at a restaurant? The restaurant. <laughs> all, all you can eat. All you can eat, yeah. Why couldn't the bagel escape? Think about it. It was covered with locks. Oh. Carol got it. Carol got it. You got it because of who you're married to, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> yes. Roy would have gotten it. Yeah. Well, I think I'm, um, I could find some more, but I'm, I'm kind of done. Oh, thank you. I was going to do that, too. March calendar. Uh, the, Jan did the trilogy. And we're right in the middle of Healing, serve, uh, healing Sunday. Uh, Course in Miracles, Sandra and William at 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So Course in Miracles, right in the back, 1 o'clock. And on Tuesday, the Emotion Code. Uh, Maria is doing that at 6.30 in the evening. What's the Emotion Code? That's where you clear emotions, which allows for healing in the body. Hmm. Hmm. That sounds like a good idea. It's really cool. Way cool stuff. Okay. And next Saturday... Uh, from one to three, silent auction items are being accepted at the church. But so, not books. But not books, yeah, no books. So this is for our expo, and this is one of the other thing, uh, things there that we offer, uh, is a silent auction. Surprisingly, it does really, really well. I mean, every single year, the very first year we did, it was like, hmm. And then I saw, I think we made like $700 or something. It was like, like ridiculous. It was just ridiculous, goofy stuff. stuff. Yeah. I don't know if people were being really kind to give money to the church or they're just buying trash. I don't know. <laughs> We've kind of upgraded since. We have. We have good, we have good stuff now. We have good we stuff. We do have good yeah, stuff. Yeah, that first year, I don't know. Yeah. What was the time on that? One to three, next Saturday the 11th. And Carol will be here with hopefully And the good news is we're going to be able to have the uh, silent auction inside the uh, main room. Mm -hmm. So that'll be way fun. Right where Jerry used to be? From. No, no, no. No, Jerry. we're not. We're, no. Mm -hmm. We're putting it over where uh, Dr. Gorsuch used to be. Oh, in the other oh, place. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Far corner. Far corner. Okay. Cool. Anything else? That's the uh, raffle. Yes, you want to show, show oh, that off? Okay. Carol's going to show off our quilt that we're going to raffle off. So this quilt, I think it's called X's and O's, and it was made by... Uh, a little old lady from no, Pasadena. No, it's not. Oh, no? Chris Powell, who is a master quilter. She teaches quilting, and it's just this beautiful... And you can show the back side. Look at all the detail in the back. Isn't that amazing? Can you see all the little fine detail in that? Yes. So it's huge, wonderful. If I tried something amazing. like that, somebody would die. Yes. I, I just wouldn't be able to do that. That was amazing. That's amazing. Isn't that beautiful? So it's just a fabulous, fabulous quilt. So 
Yeah. Anyway, and the uh, raffle, it'll be five dollars so for. It. Say what? Oh, it's on the. No, yeah. she, it's on. They can see it. You're seeing the. the it's a, anyway, did everybody go see the the other side? The mm -hmm. other side is the in, <coughs> main side. Show it up. Okay. Turn around. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> <laughs> Yay! So for five dollars, that could be for you. Thank you, Carol. Or a wonderful gift. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Anything else? Oh, probably, probably. I can. Did you want to do? We can do them later. Never mind. Oh, uh, let's do those now. Want to do them now? Sure. Okay. Since we've talking about happy, we've done happy. We've shown we are happy. what happy looks like. Now you get to wear happy. Show show <laughs> online, honey. Show online, people. <laughs> well, I pass them out. Pass them See, around. it says choose the happy. The choose happy. Kids. Kids and then the back they has the Divine Fellowship the link. So the little back, little sack is is kids. I had to use a kids. My little wrists, little hands. Um, so let's do a prayer. You want to stay for a prayer? Or you want to mo mosey on? Sure, I could do that. Okay. So I'm not going to read the title of the prayer because I don't want the prayer. I don't want the title to throw you off. Prayer of forgiveness. Oh, did Phil? <laughs> Be happy. It wasn't a secret. Be happy. Be happy. You have no idea. No idea. No idea. You all pray for me, right? Yes. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but what I wanted to share about this okay. is getting clear to be happy. So, join me in prayer, please. Loving Spirit of Light, my intentions guide me toward my hopes and dreams. When I feel frustrated, misunderstood, blocked, or distressed, my pain sends me reeling in another direction. I feel wounded by others, and I wound others by my words and actions. My goal is to bless, yet I cannot right now. My imperfections come to the surface, and I feel out of control and out of phase with your love. Clear the wounds received and given. Restore my peace and my joy. Erase the pain that knocks me off my path. Guide me into understanding of myself and others so that I might heal fully. May it be so. In the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. Nice. Thank you. Gratitude. So don't we, uh, our gratitude is, our gratitude is, I'm grateful for the healing process of forgiveness. Forgiveness. Which is. She forgives me a lot. Oh, yeah. God only knows. <laughs> Um, Paul is back. Welcome back. Thank you. I remember to say hi to you at least once. I don't know if I did it right. I'm done with you. Oh, good. Let me leave. Thank you. So, I don't know about you. I have to come back up. But I yeah, he had to get his coffee. Get his coffee. Um, but I got knocked off my path this week. My lights went out. And... I didn't yike it. My grandson used to say, I don't yike, I don't yike it. So I didn't like it. It wasn't fun. Um, but you know, sometimes once we're off our path, it's really hard to get back on. We have tools. We know we got tools, but sometimes we get stuck. We get stuck in the muck. So what are some things that turn your lights out? What turned my lights out was um, feeling helpless. That seems to be a recurring theme for me, feeling helpless. And when I was growing up, asking for help was not an option. You just didn't. So asking for help is really hard for me. But I'm learning. I'm learning. But you know, it sure wasn't any fun to be in that place of disharmony and, and, and my lights just were dimmed. As Bill can say, what didn't? What takes your lights out? What what shuts your lights off? What turns you down? Feeling overwhelmed? Mm -hmm. Anger? Your anger or somebody else's anger? 
health issues, pain, suffering, discomfort. Feeling unworthy. Feeling unworthy. That'll do it every time, won't it? Yeah. Uh, criticism. Self-criticism. Others criticizing you. Finding fault in others so that we get critical. That'll take us off our, off our game, won't it? Fatigue. That's another big one for me. Spread too thin. Too many obligations and not enough fun. Too much noise or too many people. Or not enough noise, not enough music, not enough people around. You know, depends. Everybody's different, right? Self-indulgence. Eating too many cookies. Yeah. <laughs> Sleeping too much, eating too much. Any of the too muches, the twos, that'll get us, won't it? What of those things is under our influence? How much of that do we have control over? Some of it, part of it, maybe? When we see our lights out, whatever the cause, it's telling us something. And what it's telling us is that we're not connected in. Because if we're connected in, the lights are on. If we're connected in, it doesn't matter if we've got too much on our plate or not, we're going to be able to deal with whatever's coming our way, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're feeling our lights went out, we're in disconnect. And when we're in disconnect, life is hard. It's hard. And we make it hard for everybody else. So the lights out is a symptom of something is amiss. We're disconnected from the light. So you've heard me say this before. Worry is a prayer in reverse. Because usually when our lights are out, what do we do? We worry about it. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? How am I going to deal with this? Or we complain, one of the two. And a wish is a prayer without wings. I want my prayers to have wings, right? Yes. Prayer refreshes the soul and empowers a goal. Prayer is a kite string to our hope. Don't you love that? That was a gift from, I didn't make that up, it was a gift. Hope, or prayer is a kite string to our hope. Have you ever, have you ever flown a kite? Okay, I couldn't do that as a kid. My brother can attest to that. My kite always got crunched. But I knew somebody that could, and man, they could get that kite way up in the sky. And it was almost scary, it was like, is a plane gonna run into that? I mean, it was really, really high. Did your dad do that at all? I think my dad could fly a kite. Other, yeah. But that's, our hopes need to fly high. And prayer is the string that gets it there and keeps us hanging on to that, keeps us uplifted, keeps our thoughts and our our ideals and our goals aloft. So when we get overwhelmed, the key is utilizing prayer to reconnect. Then we can make a new choice. Because I was feeling really not good and I prayed about it and let it go. And the next thing I knew, I was in a better place and I could make a new choice in my life. I couldn't get there till I prayed first. Now, what does prayer look like for you? I don't know. It's you and the, the all that is, however that looks to you. It's that opening your heart and just saying, I don't got this. Help. We don't have to have the right words. Just open up. And that opens the gateway of trust and it opens opportunities, and we get a shift gifted to us. We don't have to do all the work. I just think I have to do all the work, no. My head thinks I have to do all the work. I have to make myself do, no. Pray about it. <laughs> shift happens. So, then, when we're overwhelmed, we can ask for help, we can take a break, prioritize, let go of stuff, 
We can do different. We can choose a happier way. We could choose happy. When we're stuck, we can't choose. We're locked, locked and shut down. Without light, we can't choose. So pray about it. That'll help us choose. When we get disrupted by anger, then we can bless and be a blessing. If we're angry, bless someone. I was reading something the other day, it was, I think it was in the newspaper, where somebody was cursing somebody that cut them off as they were driving. And uh, they thought, how, you know, if that same person had sneezed, I'd have said, bless you. <laughs> so what would happen if somebody cuts you off and you, you give them a blessing? <laughs> They're driving unconnected. Bless them. Bless them. It grants us a new perspective on things, does it not? Health issues. When we pray about it, we can refocus our attention on other things. Instead of dwelling in the suffering, we can focus on what we can do to be a blessing to others, what we can do to, to share our love and our light, right? We can rejoice that we're still here. Okay, that may hurt really, really bad, and I may not like that at all, but I'm still here. And if I'm still here, I still got work to do. Right? And I still, I still have purpose. And when we're living in our purpose, our lights are on. Even if we don't know what our purpose is, our purpose will find us. Criticism. Somebody's been critical of you, or you've been critical of others, or you're critical of yourself, that lack of self-worth kind of thing. Be kind. We can choose to be kind to ourselves. What's a kind thing we can do? Sometimes a kindness is eating the right food. Sometimes a kindness is taking a walk. Sometimes a kindness is taking a break, taking a nap. Those are the kind things that we can do for ourselves and others. That blesses us. Fatigue gets us off track. Rest, but rest easy in spirit. Because sometimes we, you know, there's things that are required of us and the next thing needs to be taken care of. But if we take a moment and just rest spiritually, we'll be more energized for the next thing. Make sense? And remember, my, my favorite verse in the Bible is she did what she could. And if I'm doing what the best that I can, that's the best that I can do. Everything else is just stuff. I forget that. My lights go out. I forget that. I'm not going to fix it all. No. Nope. Spread too thin, make a new choice. Not fun. What's fun for you? What's fun for you? Make plans to do that fun thing. Sometimes when we're disconnected, we can't even find fun. Have you ever been that disconnected? Yep. So what did you used to do for fun? I used to play jacks. Well, get up, parent. Jack said as kids, you probably don't even know what jacks are anymore. Uh, do something that you used to do for fun, even as a kid. Even as a kid. Draw, paint, whatever. My favorite thing for fun? Baking. I love to bake. And then Phil gets the benefits of all that. <laughs> too much noise, too many people? Retreat. Again, if you have to be in a crowd of people, you have to be around people, take that break with divine source, and that helps you quiet your inner being so that all that other chaos is not going to affect you as much. Not enough sound, not enough people? Reach out. Turn the radio on. Crank it. In self-indulgence, be kind to yourself. Be, do a kindness to somebody else. And that takes the shift, that shifts us out of that uh, neediness within. I have a Bible verse for you. Devote yourself to And notice that your heart space is connected to your mind, your awareness. When we're in that state of connectedness, we're alert, we're open, we're shining. We are a beacon of light, 
and light fills us and guides us. Now above your head there's many energy portals. I'd like you to tune into the golden one. This one will grant you peace power. That's that state of feeling peaceful and empowered at the same time. The state of being at ease and relaxed and ready to take the next step with enthusiasm and joy. And let that golden light of love flow into the top of your head and let it touch your mind. And all the worry and the fear and the fatigue and the overwhelmed and the not good enough, let this displace that and bring to you this beautiful golden light of worth, of connectedness, of value, whatever your circumstances are. Let more and more of this living light of love, this golden peace power, let it touch your your eyes, your third eye, your discernment centers over the eyes, the occipital lobes in the back of your head. This is all how we perceive our world. If we're lit up, our world is bright. If we're not lit up, our world is grim and sad and fearful. So let this brighten our perceptions so we can see the good that is really here and not receive the lie Letting more and more of this living light of love flow down our neck into our shoulders. We carry a ton of tension here. Let's roll those shoulders. Let that go. And in its place, this beautiful golden light flows in to support and strengthen. And let that golden light flow down your spine, empowering you, directing you, giving you courage. Letting more and more of that golden light flow down your arms and into your hands. Anything you touch with your hands now is worthy work. It's not just duty, obligation. It's worthwhile things that change the world to a better place. Letting more and more of this beautiful golden light go into your torso. Let it touch every organ, every system, every tissue, every fiber, every cell, even down into the cells and down into your DNA bringing light, healing, empowerment, even down into a cellular level, a genetic level. Now, more and more of this loving light is flowing into your body. Let it flow through your legs, down into your feet, and through you into this earth. You're anchoring, you're bringing this beautiful living light of love into this physical realm. What a beautiful gift to be a conduit of light as you are. And now gently, gently, gently close the bottoms of your feet and now more and more of your aura is filled with this beautiful golden light. You still have your own aura color. It might be blue, might be green, might be pink, might be orange, whatever it is. But now it's going to have this beautiful golden hue attached to it, which is going to brighten your world empower you on a whole nother level. And let's take a little journey in our mind's eye. And it's spring, spring in my heart anyway, and we're going to go to the tulip fields in Holland. And as you arrive there, you'll see rows and rows of tulips in full bloom. So there's a whole patch of red ones and a whole patch of green ones and a whole patch of blue ones and yellow, and pink. I want you to find your way to the row of red tulips. And as you're standing in the red tulips, you feel yourself blessed with this red energy of empowerment, not force. But empowerment, the ability to take the next step forward. And now move. And now move yourself 
to a row of yellow tulips. And feel that joy flooding through your body. So you can do whatever you need to do with joy. And somebody's phone just confirmed both of those for us. And now let's move to the pink, a row of pink tulips. And you feel surrounded by love, and you feel able to express love in the highest octave. And allow yourself now to wander through the tulip fields, whatever colors you find you are longing for or you enjoy. And you run across or find the master gardener here. He has a gift for you. What gift does he give you? And lo and behold, you have a gift for the gardener. What do you give the gardener? So with gifts given and exchanged, gifts given and received, you feel vibrant. You feel alive. You feel excited. You feel blessed. And allow yourself to find your way back into this time and space, back into the here and now, back into your physical form, back into your body, back into noticing your clothing, your chair, whatever you're sitting on. I want to take a deep breath in and exhale, wiggle fingers, wiggle toes, welcome back. And Mr. Phil, if you join me up front for uh, communion, then I will discuss, share, uh, answer any questions you may have about your meditation. Join us in prayer, if you would, please. Loving Spirit of Light, as we take this in, help us to recognize this physical journey as an expression of divine love. Reconnect us to your love and help us to shine brightly. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. Mm. Got to turn the overhead. Um. You can. Mm -hmm. Join us in prayer, please. Loving Spirit of Light, as we drink this in, help us to remember Jesus guided us. He chose love, and he asked us to love one another. So grant us a deeper sense of love for ourselves, a deeper sense of your love for us, and a deeper sense of love for one another. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. Amen. So my fault, I forgot about that. Okay. Yeah. You can do my turn on now. Okay. Take a minute for them to warm up. Amen. Woohoo. Well said. <coughs> you have the uh, <laughs> You have the microphone, Phil, if anybody has a question about your guided meditation, what you gave and received. 
So um, when I was walking through the flowers, and they were all the different colors, there was one black tulip. A black tulip. That woo woo. That, that was like so beautiful. And so I received a really, really big fuzzy bumblebee, and I gave the black tulip. Ah, uh, awesome. So the fuzzy bumblebee is letting you know that um, you are granted a new measure of sweetness of life, a new uh, capacity to receive that sweetness of life. And the black tulip, what do you think the black tulip me meant for you? I'm not, I, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe, um, I think giving They are beautiful. Black ones are beautiful. Okay, so there's twofold here that I'm getting for you. So we in our culture, Western culture, black usually means darkness and pleasantness. So in one aspect, you're giving away. You don't want, you don't want that dark stuff anymore. At the same time, I'm also getting that this black tulip is about innovation. It's about new. It's about different. So you're surrendering into things are going to be different. And you're surrendering into, uh, you're allowing yourself to step into doing something different. Does that feel right? Yeah. Awesome. Who else? What I got was a rake. A rake, OK. And I gave gratitude for the rake. OK. So what do we use a rake for? Pull things together to get rid of them. Yep, yep. So this is gathering up crud that no longer serves you um, and, and collecting that, being aware of it, collecting it, and then being able to, to move, move it into a new, a new, you know, you can take crud and put it in a compost bin and it becomes really good dirt. Yeah. So just because you're not using it anymore doesn't make it bad. Okay. So this is allowed, allowing you to clear out the clutter. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the gratitude is just, you're so ready to clear. Get clear. This is getting clear physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. You're ready to get clear. Mm -hmm. All right. And you've been given the tools physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to do all of that. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Who else? I was given a bonnet, and uh, it was decorated with tulips around it. Okay. And I gave an envelope of seeds. Oh, wonderful. So, the, uh, the bonnet represents to me uh, being shielded from the harshness of life. You know, you don't, you don't have to suffer under the harshness that's there. You know, you can, you, you, you're a part of this life, and life is part of you, but it can be soft. So it's bringing a softness to you. And the seeds are new opportunities, new growth, new things. This is your being able to pass on to others the gift that you are. Make sense? Anybody else? I received a seed. A seed. I gave him love. Awesome. So the seed is a is a new beginning for you, uh, a new opportunity for you. Um, I think there's more that I'll talk to you on a personal level about that later. Um, so this is your being ready to welcome the new that's coming. And you gave gratitude, love, love. love. So love is the key. Love is the key for you. Whatever, whatever you're choosing to do is going to be coming from this place of love. Let love guide the way. Make sense? Thank you. Yes. Uh -huh. Anybody else? Up here? Just a quick one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, 
You guys are having your own fun party up here. I I could not get out of I went to blue tulips and I couldn't get out of blue tulips no matter what. Awesome. That's where you needed to be. Okay, blue tulips are all about peace. So whatever's coming up in your world, you can be at peace. No struggle. You don't have to struggle with anything. Just be at peace. And this is a divine gift. The fact that you couldn't get out of that is letting you know that God is bringing you into this place of peacefulness. And you're going to rest here for as long as you need. What a beautiful gift that was. We all could use that. Um, I don't know if there's anybody online that has any questions. If you do, um, when I post this to YouTube, whatever, I will answer your questions. So let's, um, thank you, dear. Let's do a energy circle or energy circuit for the folks online. Just so you know, there were no questions, but comments. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll, I'll respond to those when I get online. Wrap your hands together really, really fast. You're still connected in. That beautiful golden light is still flowing in. Consciously bring it into your heart space. And from your heart space to your left hand. From your left hand to your right hand. Back to your heart space. This connects that circuit. Now the energy is really flowing. And it's flowing and building. You could almost feel this golden light of this golden sphere, this golden orb being created for you. This is a extra boost for you for this week. Bring that into your heart space. Take it in. Know that you're loved. Know that love lights your way. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Be blessed. Yay. The crowd goes wild.